Hello. Hey, how's it going? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Well, awesome. Well, thank you for taking the time to do this interview. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Well, awesome. Well, of course, we're here to talk about the brand new album, Soul Loss, which is coming out soon. And I really love the direction that you guys are going in this time around. Yeah, I think it was something, um, you know, we, we've made uh, five records before this one. And um, it's hard to in rock and roll to, to come up with something new or different. So we kind of pushed ourselves to to explore some new territory for this this time. And it was uh, you know it felt very fresh and led us in a, down a few different paths we, we hadn't been on before and and ended up being solace. Uh, were any of these ideas uh, hanging around the band for a while, or was this all a brand new thing for you guys for the new album? Yeah, some of it. Um, I've been around. Uh, I think when one of the early sort of things we talked about before we started making the album was maybe exploring our, our, our Celtic roots a little bit. And um, I think going back to the second album, Everyday Demons, in the sessions for that, we had a song called Lost that, that didn't make it onto the album that was very, um, you know, very Celtic rock influenced and with some different instruments on there, borons and, and stuff. And it, we really, uh, really liked that track, but it, it didn't fit in with, uh, you know, the more hard rock and stuff we were doing at the time. So it could put to the wayside, but it was kind of a reminder of, of um, that way of working in that style. And, and we revisited that a little little bit um some of the songs had been around from in between the third album revival and a new horizon and um with, with new horizon we wanted we made a very sort of stripped down uh very basic sort of production wise album and these tracks again didn't, didn't really fit in with it and so um Another, kind of in the interim after that, we did a, a little acoustic project that uh, it, it wasn't it wasn't going to be called The Answer. It was just something we did for, for fun in, in the downtime between New Horizon, the album being finished, and, and the tour starting, which was, uh, you know, we had about seven months of, of uh, nothing happening, so we, we kind of filled our time doing that. And it was, it, it was quite Celtic-influenced, um, completely acoustic and also completely done by ourselves in in our own studio so that was kind of another uh, a template if, if you like for for some of the ideas that that ended up on on solace yeah I mean sometimes it does have in that amount of time in between albums to really get you inspired and it's it's cool to see going in that different direction of going more of the folk and acoustic route uh, in between writing albums yeah, I think it's, um, I think especially on, on New Horizon was very, uh, you know, we, we kind of explored again the idea of just a live band in, in the room and the production was, it was very, very sparse, very little overdubs. So I think once we'd done that, we kind of, we were itching to do something, you know, a bit more expansive and have a bit more fun in the studio and not be so disciplined. And again, you know, do something not not as loud and you know not all the amps and, and drums turned up to eleven. We we kind of want to do something a bit more, a bit more subtle, and uh, you know that we that led us to that acoustic project project which we really enjoyed and um, you know we, we came back and took that as as a starting point for for solace and. And really sort of explore that the acoustic direction of, of what we could do. Yeah, and that really does show it case more creativity as well. I mean, when you're only focused on playing up to 11 on the amps and just focusing on hard rock, it's really hard to explore those other territories if you don't allow yourself to do that. Yeah, I think, um, you know, the subtlety that, that we did on this, this record was something we maybe wouldn't have been allowed to, to pursue as much before. Um, and... I guess as well, you know, with the acoustic thing, you, you kind of, you have to put a lot more into the production to, to make the tracks hold people's interest or hold your interest or, or be as, as, as good as they can be. And um, we, we did that. And I think as well, we kind of, with this record, a lot of it was written in, in isolation from each other. 
Whereas usually we, you know, it starts out all four of us getting in a room, we jam and, and record it and anything that's exciting, we sort of focus on that and try and make a song out of it. And then that inspires, you know, a few different ideas come off that. We might go off and, and write, you know, write stuff ourselves and bring it into the band. But this time it, it all happened, you know, just... Um, kind of acoustic guitar and, and vocal and we built the arrangements up around that um you know so sometimes it started with a basic song guitar and voice um we did some overdubs on that and made a bit of an arrangement and there was no drums or any percussion or, or any bass and then james or, or mickey would come in and and do the drums or do the bass you know, with, um, you know, just myself engineering and, and them. And it wasn't a whole band at the same time. And, you know, that, that gave the songs a different vibe, I think, as, as well. And did you find that much of a challenge? Or was it easier to be able to write more in isolation? Um, I think it's... Uh Beforehand, it, it was a challenge because I think we thrived off uh, the chemistry of all four of us playing together. And then that was, you know, you get little sort of ideas would come from that and you would go off in isolation and expand on them. And then, you know, that was spark an idea in your head. But it all came from, from those early jamming sessions and this time we didn't have any of that. But the flip side of that was that, um, you know, we could explore different uh, different types of songwriting and, and different things. Um, you know, I think Cormac wouldn't have been singing in Irish in those jam sessions. Uh, things like Thief of Light, I don't think we would have been doing those sort of vocal arrangements in, in those jam sessions. Um, a track like Battle Cry, it's got all those sort of different, um, different flavors in it. Again, that that came that came from a lot of a lot of trial and error, and a lot of work in the studio to make it work. And, and we wouldn't have gone down that road, um, the, the old way we we used to work. So, it, the beginnings of it was quite disconcerting and, and was a challenge. But the more we did it, I think the more we embraced that um, you know there's a, a different sort of freedom in it. And when we learned to use the studio as as a tool and a way of working. Um, for example, if, if James wasn't wasn't there to play drums, we would make up a loop from stuff he'd played before and use that as a template to write the song around. Um, and that kind of you know necessity fuel a little bit of creativity as well. Was there any <laughs> resistance towards that with uh, the idea of bringing something in and uh, someone in the band didn't like that particular idea or anything like that? Uh, there was a little creative ten tension, yeah. Um, there always is a little bit, I think, because we've four, you know, there's four writers in the band, and at times there's four guys that think they're in charge. So it, there's there's always a little bit of that friction. Um, this time, you know, maybe at, at times even more than ever. But uh, you know, we got through it. Uh, personally, myself, even I remember uh, we kind of talked about what the next record could be, and the idea of exploring Cel sort of Celtic roots was was put on the table. And you know, I think maybe some of the other guys kind of thought that could be the whole record. Um, and I wasn't a hundred percent. I thought that could certainly be part of it. But I didn't think we were going to do, you know, an Irish folk record from start to finish. That that wasn't in the script for me. Um, and as time went on, you know, through that sort of creative tension, we find other ways that uh, it didn't just have to be Celtic roots. It could be roots music from all over the world. And, you know, a track like Battle Cry had some, some Latin flavors in the, the percussion. Um, and then some of the other tracks, you know, Solace or, or Beautiful World. We could explore a more cinematic, atmospheric direction that was a little bit different from, you know, the Celtic acoustic thing, and that we could explore using the studio as, as a tool a little bit more, which which did really excite me, and maybe I was pushing that side of things, but we all kind of when we all came together and, and worked on it that. Um, you know, it made the, the record that much more colorful. And I think that's what I appreciate so much about the new album is just being able to explore all of those territories. And when you do that, it makes the dynamic stand out that much more when it's more subdued, it's more subdued. But when it's more lively, it's more lively as well in contrast. 
Yeah, I, th I think you're right, yeah. It was, um, I think there's a lot of, uh, I guess there's a little bit of fire in, in the creation and, and the, the performance, and and that comes through. Um, I think certainly, you know, the, the kind of last two records, I, I really liked them, particularly really enjoyed Raise a Little Hell, but we kind of, maybe that sort of way we were working and that type of, of rock and roll, we'd done as much as we could with it for now and we really needed to to go down a few different avenues and uh you know we, we got to do that at times it was a difficult birth but we we got through it and um you know i think also in people's lives there was a lot of stuff going on like uh you mentioned parts of it being a bit more subdued and i think cormac had a lot of stuff in his life with the, the birth of his, his son arriving three months premature he kind of um you know it, it looked like maybe he, he wouldn't survive for for a long time and it took four to, to six months before before his son was, was stable so at times he was in a very dark place and i think he he explored that in, in some of the tracks and that's why it sounds a little bit subdued and then when when that turned around and, and things were were better it was a celebration you know for, for all of us and i think it also for the band it was a difficult start to making the record and as it went on we all embraced it a little bit more and i think you hear that kind of that that joy come out in it too yeah i definitely hear that i mean when it's more subdued, I definitely get that dark feeling behind it, but it does. the whole album does showcase a lot of different emotions, and it makes you want to listen to it from start to finish to see where it goes. Well, so I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're, you're getting that experience from it. it um, I, I can't say that was exactly what we, we started out to do, because it was very much a, a blank canvas, and you know, apart from the Celtic, the Celtic Roots idea, we kind of just took that as a starting point and went off and I guess um, you know sometimes art mirrors life and, and we were lucky that way that it it, it got to, to take you on that journey and, and showcase those different emotions and those different sounds and those different styles of music. I think if we tried to do that at the very beginning we maybe we would have failed and um, wouldn't have been able to pull it off but I'm, I'm glad it, it came together organically in that way. And how has been uh, the reception so far for what people have heard so far? Um, we, we played a couple of new tracks. Um, we were on tour in the summer. We, we did some festivals and some shows of White Snake, and we picked uh, Solace and Thief of Lights to play at the very end of the set. Um, it was actually a tour that was the 10 year anniversary of our, our first album, Rise. So the first sort of part of the set, we would, we would play Rise start to finish. And then at the end, we'd um, play some of the new songs. And I guess when, when we do those songs live, they sound a bit more like like people, you know, classic answer in a way. And uh, But I think, you know, Thief of Light certainly was a little bit different for, for people. Um, and it, it seemed to go down. It went down really well. And then we released some tracks. Solace came out as a single. And is on the radio over here and is, is getting a great reception. And we also put Beautiful World up there, specifically because it's, it's I think it's probably the most different track for us on there. And we wanted to, to gauge people's re reaction to that. And it's, uh, you know, it's very much a love it or hate it track, but I think um, most people seem to be to be into it. Um, some people don't don't know what to make of it yet. Uh, a small section hate it, but uh, I think that's that's a good thing. That shows we're kind of if you're hitting people strongly, you know, in love and hate, then you you've done something right with with your art. So so far, it's 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 had a good re reception, and we've put the kind of a, a teaser of, of the whole album up at the moment and uh, people are, are, are digging into that and really enjoying it. I think, um, you know, I think when they heard Solace, it's kind of, the track itself is, it goes in a new direction um, that, that I would expect our fans to enjoy. Uh, Beautiful World maybe is taking a bit of a chance. But I think um, when they heard some of the other tracks on there, you know, like the Thief of Light, Demon Driven Man, uh, Battle Cry, they kind of 
um, they can gauge that it's it's going down a route that they're 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 going to enjoy and get into. So I'm very excited for it to come out in the 28th, and I'm really looking forward to the tour to, to play it because it'll also be a different experience to play it live for us because um, I think we we can't just use the old approach of sort of guitar, bass, drums, and, and vocals to to pull it off. It's going to take sort of embracing of a little bit of te- new technology of um Cormac's gonna play a little bit of acoustic on some tracks um when I'm when I'm playing mandolin uh Mickey's gonna play some acoustic as well so it's it's kind of a reinvention of our our live personas which is um in the same way making the record that we had different roles was was disconcerting in the beginning that that also will, will be too but um also fresh and a challenge and at this stage of our career it's it's nice to still have something that that can challenge you and, and keep you moving forward yeah, I was definitely going to say, when you change your live setup in such a way like that, I mean, it doesn't just inspire creativity, but it also does make it more fun than just doing the same routine for the new album, uh, do the same basic set, same basic instruments, things like that. When you have those new challenges and incorporate those new instruments like that and uh, using technology for the parts that you can't play live, it makes it a more fun experience because you're not used to it. Oh, certainly, yeah. Um... You know, you can either be afraid of the unknown or, or you can embrace it. And, you know, ultimately, I think uh, once you move past the fear, it's it's a re- rewarding experience in, in anything in life. And music's no different. So I think it's just even from the early rehearsals, I can see that sort of excitement in people's eyes again and, and that freshness. And everyone's em- embracing the challenge. Um, even for, for me personally as being the only guitar player in the band through our career I kind of my style kind of grew up around covering all, all that space with, with the one guitar and sometimes it can limit what what you you play even when recording albums you maybe approach the guitar as one one performance rather than you know all the the way you can subdivide it into different parts and make it an orchestra of its own it's a different it's different for me to play say play a guitar solo and and not have to worry about coming straight in again on on the downbeat to, to play rhythm i can be a bit more expressive and uh, go out on a limb a bit more and that's uh, a whole other side I'm, I'm really enjoying at the moment and as you should, especially with being now over 10 years of being in this band, I mean, to be able to play for a decade and be able to expand your sound the way that you have with Solos, I mean, that really opens things up for the future of where the band can go. Yeah, def- definitely. I think um, from even early interviews we've we've done regarding the album, um, and kind of being in a, a more objective place on on the creation of it and, and how I feel about the the end result. One of the things um, that that I felt is that we we can do it. We can do it better. I can see where some parts of, of the you know the production and stuff could be more efficient or or ways we could get even more complicated with now that we know how to do it. And I think with with having our own studio. Uh, you know, we'd done B sides in it before, and um, bonus tracks, and even on on the previous record, we ended up doing the title track "Raise a Little Hell" in, in our own studio after the the main sort of album tracking sessions were done. So to do a whole record there, that that puts a different pressure on you. And now that we've we've pulled that off, it's exciting to know we can do that anytime. I'm kind of being in control of our our own creative destiny. So I'm all already very excited to, to go back in and, and, and do another another record. Is there any ideas yet for that uh, next record, or are you just focusing on the Solas cycle right now? It's th- just on, on the Solas cycle right now. Um, I think uh, kind of our, our first our first challenge was, was to make the album in, in you know, kind of different circumstances in our own studio. Um, we kind of had, we had, we had producers f- for the album, but a lot of it was done, I would say, with our, ourselves, um, certainly at least co-producing. Um, and uh, I think that was the first challenge to, to make that all work. 
and now the next one is is to pull it off live which um, I'd say we're halfway to doing and the tour is, is going to start in, in November we do that up until Christmas so I think that's that's the next challenge is is pulling that off live and, and seeing how the fans react to it and where the live show can go next um, I think we'll, we'll have some more touring coming up in January, February time and then after that we'll, we'll see I guess we'll start, start writing for, for the next one and and see how, how all this is will influence that. Um, but we're still very much in the, the solace cycle for now. Oh, very cool. And I'm, again, it just it makes me very happy to see all of this inspiration that's going on. And sometimes it just takes being able to uh, take control of the band from the recording aspect to uh, the songwriting aspects, everything about that to be able to refresh yourself as a band. And I think that's really happened here with Solas. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's, um, it, it's great to hear that because um, I know certainly when you, when you start out in a band, you're making your first record. Uh, we were, we were always ambitious enough to look forward and and think that someday we would be a bit more in control of you know the production aspects and and the record making experience and it, I guess it, it took us a while to, to get to that point um, but I think you know before your first record is very much a learning experience and we were happy to to give that sort of control in, in terms of production and and how we went about making it to someone else. And then after that, I think, um, because the first record did quite well, every album after that becomes very important. And, um, you know, the record companies weren't always brave enough to put the, you know, control of that in our hands. And finally, we've we've arrived in a point where we could take that, that out of their hands and, and just do it ourselves, which is, you know, it's it's refreshing and, um, you know, good to know that we, we finally got there and can do it. Yeah, and as a fan uh, from all the way back, it just, again, it makes me happy to see where you guys are at this point. And, you know, like some people who may not be enjoying what they hear on Solas, I think they really got to appreciate the ambition and... And the strength that it takes to be able to put out an album like this, because it could have been very easy to write the same album over and over again, but you guys have proven that you can write new music and take things in a new direction, but still have that core sound and that love for playing music. Yeah, I think so. Um, You know, I think every record, we try to do something a a little bit different, Um, maybe only on a track or two. But uh, we always try to, to show that there were certain different avenues we, we could go down. And um, this time we kind of decided to do more than just one or two tracks. We, we ended up doing a, a whole record, I think, of, of those different avenues. Um, maybe even it would have been better for our career if, if we did keep making this, the same record. And, uh, you know, if, if we just I think there was always a pressure on us to, to make Rise too. And we always resisted that. And, uh, you know, I, I hope people persevere with Solace and and get into it. And I know if, if, if they do persevere with it, they will, it will reveal itself to them as a, you know, as a great answer record. And if you liked us in the first place, I think there's enough of that soul and, and DNA still within there that, that um, you know, you'll get the record and, and get into it. Yeah, and I'm, I'm definitely one of them. I mean, when I first put on Solace, like, it, it was a bit of a shock to me because I wasn't really expecting this style, but as I kept listening to it and then I kept going back through it, I started to notice all these different nuances and all these different folk and root style elements that are going into it, but it's still coming from the answer and it's just that's what I really love about an album is when a band can be adventurous but still really mean what they put behind the music and I think when the album does come out on October 28th I think people if they're willing to give it a chance I think they're really going to enjoy what they're going to hear yes I think you're right you know um, there's still a lot of the uh, you know the fingerprints that that are the answer I think one of our our most distinctive uh, characteristics was, was always Cormac's voice and that's still there in in glorious technicolor and he's kind of uh, explored a lot of different tones and 
and different textures to his voice that he maybe hadn't done before and it's you know it's not all sort of high octane vocal acrobatics there's a lot of a lot of subtlety in there and you know i think people will will even just get off on that yeah i mean i definitely think that'd be a great way to look at it i mean anything to, for people to give the full album a chance because i think it's going to rank very high on my favorite albums at the end of the year and it's something that i keep going back to and w- again when it comes out october 28th new album solace i i think people are really going to enjoy what they hear i, I hope so josh i hope so <laughs> well awesome well thank you once again for taking the time to do this interview to be able to promote solace uh uh, coming out October 28th. Uh, before we're done, is there anything else you'd like to mention that I haven't brought up yet? Um, no, I think you've got most of the most of the, the points there, Josh. Um, just like to thank everyone for for sticking with us, and uh, you know, hope hope they give the, the new record a, a chance. And I think ultimately you'll, you'll get into it.